Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where, yes, we are making our way through the Star Wars prequels. We could just say the prequels and people would know what we're talking about, right? Is there a more famous set of prequels, do you think? The Hobbit prequels? No. The Harry Potter prequels? No. That Indiana Jones movie that's a prequel? Is it? What? Which one? Temple of Doom. Oh, yeah. And also Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, Mason. Oh, my God, I forgot about edutainment. I completely <laughs> forgot about edutainment. Well, we're not being edutainment this week, are no, we, Mason? that's very true. Uh, leave a like because, of course, we... We are talking about Attack of the Clones from 2002. Let me ask you this, James. I love questions, I love answers. When this movie came out, people were like, uh, excuse me, Attack of the Clones? That's a dumb name. What is I just that? heard the new Star Wars film's called Attack of the Clones. No, it is. Is it? I mean, they're all kind of dumb, in aren't the they? In the, in the context of all the other ones, Attack of the Clones is not dumber than The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. It's just people had more time to adjust to the name The Empire Strikes exactly. Back, I think. And it's like pulpy and 1950s y and Flash Gordon y. Exactly. But in keeping with that kind of 1950s, like, aesthetic and jumping into an adventure, it feels like a couple of movies happened between this movie and the last in the opening crawl. Yes. It's like several thousand solar systems want to leave the Republic. Count Dooku is leading the Separatists and it's like, what? What happened? What? Count Dooku <laughs> and I know is leading it, the Separatists. And I know it's been 10 years, but it's a little like catch up and th and then yeah. it leaves a lot of things up in the air and then just doesn't really answer them in movies, I should specify. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is a little jarring. So this time around, uh, George Lucas didn't hand in the shooting script until three days before. So the creation of worlds and characters and ships and all this behind the scenes work and pre and creating digital characters and environments. And also there's still a bunch of model work in this. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So they were making all of these things. They were making them before they started filming, not knowing how long each of them would be on screen. So it's like how much time and effort right. and detail do you dedicate to a character that might be a background character? Yeah, do we develop... <laughs> Do we develop an entire city planet with every like district and every yeah. you know uh, shopping strip and Absolutely, so on and so yeah. forth? Not not knowing if Obi Wan and Anakin are going to visit the shopping strip <laughs> and do one of those scenes where they have a bunch of bags in their hands and they spin around, you know? That's it. Imagine if you designed all those shopping bags, yeah, yeah, with yeah. all the different Star Wars universe boutiques, and then they didn't. <laughs> then Lucas is like, "We're not going to do the scene where they spin around." <laughs> There's no time. There's no time for your My Fair Lady nonsense. <laughs> We're not going to give Anakin a little glow up. <laughs> he already looks great. He looks great. He comes in at 100%. I'm sure people have pointed this out. He is in the uh, could fall to the dark side or remain in the light side outfit. Oh, absolutely. Because famously, of course, the good guys always wear like a light, a yep. light color or a beige and the bad guys are in black, but he's in like he's in a fetching black What's and brown. Into? Where do you even get that? I'm pretty sure that's not regulation. He had to go to a Jedi tailor and a Sith tailor, <laughs> and then he stitched and he got half each, and then he stitched them together at home. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, even though this is a very digital movie, do you remember when a lot of movies just look like Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow? By the way, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was groundbreaking in a lot of ways, but not script-wise. No, also, it looked like it was filmed in a cupboard, you know? It sure did, yes. But still, yeah, I agree, James groundbreaking. It's a cupboard, but also there's a fire happening in the building and all your smoke detectors are going off. It's just very foggy. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Very foggy in there. That being said, there is a bunch of model work in this. Okay. Like the Geonosis Arena, all of the buildings are mostly miniatures, a lot of interiors, like inside of the Camino facility, they built and then filmed for real. And the reason is it was quicker to do that than to create digital backgrounds at this point. Interesting. So a lot of the time they're just making the actors fit there to scale. Interesting. Yeah. Now, Dexter Jetster's diner. Yes. Real or? Real. Whoa. Very real, So we Mason. could visit it. Well, we could definitely visit it because it was filmed in Australia. Jay LaGaia, Rose Byrne. Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson, the first nude male centerfold in Clio Magazine, 1972. Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton. Susie Porter is in the diner. Oh. Ooh. In the background, yeah, absolutely. There's a bunch of that going on here. Boy, it really takes you out of a movie when you go, isn't that the guy who, who with the death sticks? See, I, did I see him in the, the TV show <laughs> Spellbinder or something? James, <laughs> let me tell you this. If I existed a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away and I was offered a product called death sticks in yeah. a nightclub, I simply would not purchase and, and, and consume them. Furthermore, James, if I were a changeling and I were being pursued... Yeah. By, uh, what would you change a ling into? Anything else. I simply would not stay looking exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> well, maybe and they slip away. Well, the thing is about those uh, changelings, and we know this from the comics later on, more recently, they can change into anything. 
So I'd change into like a broom or a hat stand or something. I'd change into a death stick dealer. Yeah. And Obi Wan would be like, simply go away. <laughs> I'd be like, nailed it. <laughs> I will go away. I will go away. Thank you. Yeah. So this was one of the first uh, blockbusters. Oh, it's actually one of the first blockbusters. Well, in a way, Mason. Hmm. There were movies shot on digital before, but this was easily the biggest to do so. And in doing so, they had to get custom cameras built from Sony and lenses from a different company. And there are a couple of advantages to this. For one, And you know Sony and a different company oh don't get along. Oh my God, yeah. You know? Have you ever tried to get a charger for your PS Vita? Forget about it. From different company? <laughs> they'll never do it. <laughs> but there's a few advantages to that. One being there's no film processing. Okay. So you can basically take what you've shot in the day. It's already synced up the audio and the video and you can just look at it on the spot. Okay. You know, it's ready to go. But the disadvantage is those cameras, because they were the first of their kind, enormous, the size of a bus, really unwieldy. Well, guess what? Not my problem. <laughs> They're not bringing them into the cinema, are they? <laughs> well, that's true. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care if you all have bad backs after this. <laughs> you know what I liked about this movie is in contrast to maybe perhaps modern blockbusters that are being filmed on digital is actually like crisp colour and yeah. just, just very vibrant as opposed to yeah. like your modern blockbuster where it's just like... Put a grain on it. Put a, put a grain on it, yeah. yeah. You say that and Star Wars has actually gone back to film since then. Mm -hmm. But because these were the early cameras, there had to be a lot of colour adjustment work to make it look like this because they get the image back and it's like, this looks like shit. Like <laughs> sure, they had yeah. to tweak it a lot uh -huh. to make it look like this. Uh -huh. And at the time I did not like the aesthetic and there's still a lot of this that I feel doesn't hold up as much as like The Phantom Menace. But it does, now that it's like 20 years on, there is like a nostalgic kind of feel right, to this, sure, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh -huh. I mean, this has always been one of my least favourite Star Wars movies. Even more so than Phantom Menace. Yes. Whoa. But, there's, but I think I've come around on a lot of it. Okay. And I don't know whether like a lot of that is nostalgia also. But, you know, the idea of Obi-Wan goes on a little detective adventure. <laughs> oh, yes. That's fun. He's, yeah. he's running about the galaxy. You know what I liked uh, and I appreciate it, and I think you maybe mentioned it in brief last week. I enjoyed the idea of seeing the, the Jedi in their prime. You know, there's a lot of fun to be had in just the idea of them, but like leaping off a speeder and falling hundreds of stories. Yeah. Because they got the skills. They got the skills and they know they got the skills. They're going to gonna land on something. Some of them have the skills. Some of them have some, some of skills. Them just get shot. Okay, that's, that is also true. <laughs> yeah. And also, I understand that this is. We're, we're witnessing the decline of the yeah, Jedi Order in this. Yeah, there's a lot of hubris. This. Like the librarian, oh my god, everybody is yeah. so smug and so wrong. Yeah, the librarian's like, nah, if it's not on, in the library, it's, it doesn't exist. That's a great character who they've fleshed out in the comics since, oh. Joe Carson knew. But yeah, the idea of just <laughs> Jedi like... Jedi librarian. Yeah, they're like, oh, it seems as if there's some kind of gravity well, like a planet could be in this blank spot on the map. Probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Probably simply a shadow. Yeah, that's right. Let's not investigate it further. I li there's, a line, there's a line where... Uh, uh, they're like, oh, what's what's going to happen in the future? And uh, uh, Yoda's like, the dark side clouds everything. And I'm like, oh, boo-hoo. You can't use your magic. <laughs> Might have to rely on some actual intuition. Oh, sorry. Sorry you haven't exercised that in 500 years, Yoda. <laughs> no, you're right, though. And you see them falling apart. They're not used to this kind of action. You know, in the mm. arena, 200 show up, but maybe 20 get out. Mm, yeah. You know, they just, they're just not equipped for this kind of, you know, situation. And speaking of Yoda, how do you feel about... The digital Yoda this time around. This Didn't is hate it. we have a video before I, where I've talked about like why did they do this? Because they went out of their way to to make it look like a puppet and add all the imperfections. Mm -hmm. But there is something about it that yeah, there are certain things you can do, and I'm not just talking about the flipping and the spinning. Sure. Which you know you it can. Oh, I forgot about the flipping yeah. and the spinning. We'll get to that. A we'll little get to later. that. But you know it can emote in a way, but also the way that they went back to that for the Last Jedi. That's the way they really should be doing it. Oh, it's yeah. a, it's definitely an admirable attempt, mm -hmm. and it works. I think in this movie, but if you put that in a movie now, it doesn't. I don't think it'd translate. Couldn't well. do it these days. No, not with cancel culture, Mason. Mm -hmm. Not with cancel culture. <laughs> Lightsabers don't mean anything, do they? What do you mean? Oh, you mean like they're they're, they're supposed to be a significant <laughs> device, like an like a iconic thing in a Jedi's life, and they build it, and it has a lot of significance to them. Yeah. But in this movie, they're just like. Hey, uh, Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin need some help. Chuck them some lightsabers. Yeah, and there's even a scene where Obi-Wan's like, this is really important, don't lose this, and they both lose them, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. But yeah, I think that also takes away from the idea of this Skywalker legacy lightsaber. It's like, oh, that lightsaber he had for like two years before he fell into the fire. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People talk about how it's Anakin's lightsaber and it's an important lightsaber. The most important thing that lightsaber's done is kill a bunch of kids, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very That's true, That's the yeah. legacy of that lightsaber but that's nostalgia you know yeah it is you know you know what i think is interesting about this movie 
I think there is a lot of it that is in reaction to the reception of the previous movie. Okay. And where that stands out the most is Jar Jar. The role is greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. George Lucas gives him the... This is the guy who gave all the power to the Emperor scene. Okay, sure, which yeah. Was a, which was like, you hate this guy, do you? Well, now you're going to really hate him. Sure. But I do wonder how much of his character being pulled back was to do with the reception and how much was to do with merch sales. Oh, like people you know? didn't like those those lollipops. Those, those lollipops. Jar Jar Tongue lollipops. But you know what I mean? Did they end up with like just... <laughs> Just landfills filled with these maybe, with this character. Just piling them on top of the ET cartridges. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. How do you feel about the uh, the Star Wars fan theory that, in fact, Jar Jar Binks was a, was a, a dark Jedi I, who, who, brought, who deliberately brought about the end of uh, uh, the, the, the Republic? It's, who cares, is my answer to that, I great, guess. Great, <laughs> great point, James. Great, terrific point. And also, George Lucas was going to make him speak regular English in this, to just be like, oh, he can speak English, but he, he didn't in the last movie. Oh, he got a, he got a My Fair Lady glow up. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Terrific. So, uh, the worst bounty hunter in the world has an assassination attempt. Okay, so so if, if I, so, Dooku yep. wants to assassinate Padme. Yes. So he hires Jango Fett, yes. who outsources... His assassination yep. to the changeling person. Who outsources it to, to a, a couple of, to couple, a droid. To a droid who <laughs> outsources it to a couple of poison worms, I guess. <laughs> Worm millipede things. Yeah. And then they've clearly been told, okay, if this assassination attempt fails, just go back to home base. Really <laughs> really lead really lead the Jedi to Mary Chase back to me personally. That's what I want. And then Django's just hanging out, ready to assassinate that lady. Yeah, absolutely. I would have left. I would have also left. Yeah, the idea that she's anywhere near any of that. I mean, you send off the droid with the worms in it. Mm-hmm. Then you go to... Go anywhere. A, di- a different diner. Go to a Star Wars bar. Yeah. A different Star Wars bar. Go to Galaxy's Edge. I'm loving seeing a Star Wars bar, by the way, let me just say. Mm. Did you notice the bit where Obi-Wan cut off a hand, like in the other Obi-Wan movie? Yes, I did mo- notice that, yes. It's good to notice things it and is, then bring it? it up, because then otherwise people will say we didn't bring it up. Well, we brought it up because we noticed it. <laughs> That's right, that? yeah. But that whole chase sequence, like, it's kind of cool, but there's also an element of, so Anakin's just invincible till he isn't? I mean, you mentioned the fall from Great Height. There's a moment later on the conveyor belt where he just gets his arm completely pressed in a sheet of metal, uh-huh. and it's fine. Yeah. But then at the end, he, he you know, he's, he loses the fight or whatever. That's foreshadowing, James. <laughs> I guess it is foreshadowing. There's a moment... Where Obi-Wan's like, what have I told you about power couplings? Speaking of bloody power couplings, we'll bloody get to it, Mason. What, what, don't go through the power couplings. But, like, nothing happens. They just, they just cruise out the other side. The ship doesn't, you know. It didn't, c- couldn't go over it, couldn't go around it. We, we didn't, like, see them get electrocuted and we saw their skeletons on the inside. That's true, yeah. I, I wanted to see that. I wanted <laughs> to see all of that, Mason. I wanted them to just be reduced to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru burnt charred corpses and just... <laughs> The speeder slides to a halt, <laughs> and then there's just an awkward funeral, and that's the rest of the that's the rest of the movie. Speaking of, yeah, when Mace Windu kills Jango Fett, yeah, I recall that his head falls out of the helmet, but obviously that doesn't happen. Well, it does fall out of the helmet when the shadow of the helmet like flies off, ah. the shadow of the head okay, moves across right. the ground. Okay, right. But apparently, they were thinking of doing that at one point, like putting the head in, mm-hmm. but no, it's not a. Uh, it's not a thing, okay. unfortunately. Right. Yeah, I mean, we'd all love to see it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Let's talk about Django, though. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, they get to him through Dexter Jetster, who I, uh, for the first time, I noticed has a mustache. Because like, there's so much going on in that room yeah. and on him, mm-hmm. and I just never realized he had a mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I feel is period incorrect. I think he probably should have had sideburns. I agree. As opposed to a mustache. I completely agree. Or sideburns that connect to a mustache. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Like Wilford Brimley style. Uh, Wilford Brimley, yes. <laughs> yeah. So just quickly though, uh, Obi Wan orders a cup of Jawa juice. Okay. Uh, this beverage originated on Tatooine and it's made from bantha hide mashed with fermented grains. Sounds awful. Mm. Uh, anyway, and a bit boozy. <laughs> you, the Obi Wan, you getting your getting your buzz on before you do some investigating. Let's talk about Buzz just quickly okay. because one of the theories behind who tried to kill Queen Amidala, Senator Amidala, whatever. She's always a queen to me. Thank you. When she was 14, elected queen, by the way, what the fuck system is that? Well, we don't know how ages work in this universe. Again, That's true. They might all be, from our perspective, they might all be a thousand years old and a thousand feet tall. So <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. So one of the theories that I think Mace Windu floats is disgruntled spice miners of the moons of Naboo tried to, to kill her, right? So okay. I looked into this. First of all, I'm confused because like, 
Spice is illegal, right? It's it's an illegal, illicit substance. It's so vague and illegal. I yeah. love it. And expensive. Do you remember? Very expensive. Remember vaguely when, expensive. So some miners on the moons of Naboo, I looked into this, repeatedly went on strike for larger shares of the profits. Some splinter groups committed minor political violence, such as breaking windows and security shields, even burning an empty warehouse on Naboo itself. I love how they did that and they went, yeah, these guys are capable of murder, I reckon. Are they clearly just trying to form a union? And the Jedi, the cops, mm -hmm. are just like, nah, these guys are all murderers. Why are they allowed Not to- unlike us, we've never murdered anybody. <laughs> Is this a legal or illegal operation also? Great question, Because they all are getting- Paid, but not enough. Mm. And it's all off Naboo, which is apparent. Is that a criminal planet? What's happening? It's politics, Mason. I it love it. Same. <laughs> anyway, Django Fett, right? He's the one who does it. And he's like, I want a boy. I want a boy who not only looks just like me, he is me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Down sure. to his genetic code. Very odd. I don't want him to be genetically modified so he grows up really fast. <laughs> I want to just raise a kid the slow way and it's really frustrating. <laughs> and I'm tired all the time. Sure, I could have him be a, my son and also a 30-year-old man, but I refuse. <laughs> what a rotten little kid. <laughs> well, it's bullets both effect. I know, but I mean, it's, uh, it's just Django's like, now nah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pursue this guy through the asteroid field. We're going to kill him. And Boba Fett's like, yeah, <laughs> yuck, yuck, little kid. No big, wonder he went bad. I'm a big fan. Well, he did that. He came good, didn't he? I guess. Did you remember he became good? He recently? inexplicably became good and he, he became, was always good. He became a sheriff or something. Yes. Yeah. I do, uh, speaking of things I like from this movie, mm -hmm. I really love that fight in the rain with Obi-Wan. Uh -huh, yeah. because Mostly because it's like slightly different. They're just slipping about and headbutting each other. There's a big karate kick in oh, it. Oh, big flying kick. Yeah. There's a moment where Django... That's a risky kick to take. In the wet? In the wet, sure. That's right. <laughs> yeah, in a you big cloak? Oh, you'll blow your ankle. You'll hit your hip. You'll land on your hip. My goodness. <laughs> also, there's a moment where Django does a horizontal climb across a pillar. And seeing that now, I'm like... That's crazy. The amount of strength you take to do that and then fire a rocket off your back holding onto this slippery wet pillar. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible upper body and core strength, Mason. That's right. Yeah. Anyways, Obi-Wan should have used like all of his Jedi powers in that. Nah. Why are you going hand to hand? Good just, question. Just throw him off the cliff. Crush his heart. Crush his heart. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the, what's the metal called? Maybe the best car prevents... Got Heart gaps. crushing. It's got gaps. Yeah, it's got gaps, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, so, bloody Obi Wan's got some gaps in his bloody Jedi power knowledge. Oh, you're not wrong, much. mate. What a. I mean, look, I love you and McGregor in these movies, mm -hmm. but the worst detective. Maybe not the. Maybe he's the best detective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe in this galaxy, this is what a good detective looks like. <laughs> yeah. Just not figuring things out. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's given the run around. Children are telling him what to do. I mean, that being said. A real chameleon. Because, yeah. you know, he, he shows up at uh, Camino and, and they're like, you must be the Jedi who, who, who hired us. And he's like, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> that's my name. And if, if, if that's a clue that perhaps I'm not the Jedi that hired you, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but I can't lie. I can't say I'm not Obi-Wan Kenobi. That whole sequence is bizarre because they're like, so you want to see the clones? And he's like, uh, yes. <laughs> I do, actually. Good thing these creatures can't read faces, I think. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. But he's just throwing out just wrong information. He's like, they're like, Cypher Dias came here and did it. And he's like, Cypher Dias is dead. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, don't say that. Just go, interesting. What else do you know? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, mate? Spill the tea, please. <laughs> Spill the Jawa tea. So when, uh, this is a fun thing. You know how George Lucas loves to change things after that? That is a fun thing. Yeah. So apparently in the original cinematic cut of this, Django Fett doesn't try to ignite his backpack to escape, but then for the DVD he does. Oh. So there's a moment where he's like, I'm going to use my jetpack to get away from Mace Windu. He fires it up. It doesn't work. And he just gets... Oh, interesting. <laughs> he just okay. gets wiped out. Okay, all right. And here's something that people might be interested in. There's a great Star Wars channel called Bombastic, and he actually got someone to go back and to complete that whole sequence of Jango Fett being killed because Mace Windu actually runs in and, like, carves him up before he beheads him. Oh. Like, he takes off an arm, he, like, slashes him. It's, like, a horrible murder. It's not just a clean beheading. Okay. Like, he really takes his time on it. When is this, though? What Just before he beheads him. Oh, but that's not in the movie. No, it's not. But okay. you can see it. It's here now. Thank you, Bombastic Clips. Please oh, this is, just a, this is just a fun imagining of a man being dismembered. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's really weird. Go on. That they paired Anakin and Padme together. And I think they might have just done it because they... 
they had to be together. <laughs> Do you get sure, that sense? I do. <laughs> and also they're like, you'll be safe on Naboo. Oh, how are we going to get them there? I know, we'll get the head of the Naboo guard and we'll get a guy in Jedi robes to drop them both at the bus station. <laughs> Nobody will see this, right? Incredible. Mm. And also, Anakin's got the Jedi haircut. You know what I mean? It's true. I would have sent one of the horse face <laughs> Jedis, quite frankly. Yeah. And the thing with Anakin is, Go he's on. got very obvious mental health problems. I agree. Right? And the idea that... If you're not feeling great in this universe as a Jedi, they send you to Yoda, I guess. And he goes, you seem a bit angry. Mm. You know, angry. We don't do that. Yeah. If you could just. Are there, are there no other systems in place here? Just pipe down. <laughs> just pack it down in, in your soul. <laughs> it shouldn't come out again if you pack it down yeah. tight enough. Mm-hmm. Why don't you go visit your mum? Well, that's the thing. So what happened to Shmi Skywalker in this movie? How did, how did we get here? I did some research, right? I love, how, I love how Anakin shows up to Watto and he's like, where's my mother? And, and he's like, oh, I sold her. And he's like, you sold her? That's the... Cr- he's already a slave owner. You what know you- him. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best case scenario. Right? Really, yeah. Yeah. So apparently, a few years before the Clone Wars, Owen Lars, or the Larses, took a trip to uh, the spaceport settlement of Mos Espa where they met Shmi Skywalker, who was owned by Watto. There's no other information, or they didn't used to be. It was just... Lars fell in love with Shmi and bought her from Watto, thus freeing her from slavery. And the two married and lived together as husband and wife. Okay. If you look at that scenario just on the surface, mm-hmm. that's terrible. Falling in love and being like, we're in love and now I'm going to... Purchase you. Purchase you. But that it's was- like those stories your grandparents are like, yeah, and I asked her out every day for five years and eventually she said yes and then the week after we were married. <laughs> Sounds like a hostage situation. That's actually terrible. Uh, that was actually recently retconned, not your grandparents, that was real. Mm. Uh, that Aunt Bru, uh, famous Star Wars character who does nothing, created a plot to free her from Watto in a rigged gambling game. Oh. She went, we're going to fucking Qui-Gon Jinn this shit. This guy sure. is a moron. <laughs> we, we, can, we can pull this off. And also apparently Padme sent her best handmaiden to free the slaves a few years after the Phantom Menace. Four years, by the way. That's a long time. Sure and is. she'd already been freed by that point. So nobody really had any idea where this woman was outside of the few people on Tatooine who knew her. Even Watto's like, I don't know, I don't know, Solder, I guess. Uh-huh. Guess what the Jedi did in that time? Nothing. That's correct, Mason. Oh. Absolutely nothing. If Book of Boba Fett has taught us anything, what she should have done was gone out to the desert with the Tusken Raiders and fought a big sand Goro. That's right. And won their respect yes. by fighting the big sand Goro. That's right, they're full of honour. <laughs> <laughs> and then Anakin could have done the big force healing on her, which is a Star Wars thing, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. she would have been fine. But no, she uh, she dies. I do love that twin son shot uh, where he's on the speeder and he goes across Tatooine. Mm-hmm. That's great. Is it the best speeder shot in this movie or is the best speeder shot in this movie a very puzzled Christopher Lee <laughs> who's been comped in quite badly? <laughs> and he's just like, ooh... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> where am I? Yeah. What am I looking at? Doesn't matter. Look anywhere. It's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it all in. Yeah. We'll fix your eye line. We'll give you, <laughs> we'll give you crossed eyes. You can be looking at anything. <laughs> Speaking of Christopher Lee, though, apparently, I, I think this is still canon, he paid the Tusken Raiders to... Count Dooku did, not yeah, Christopher Lee. That's right. <laughs> to kidnap Shmi Skywalker to set off Anakin Skywalker. Right. And that was then going to be revealed in that Revenge of the Sith battle. And that's what kind of leads... Anakin to kill him. Ah. So I think that would have been like an interesting wrinkle to all of that, but no, they didn't do any of that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyways, what a love story. And what a, what I'm talking about Obi Wan and Anakin. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. They bicker and belittle each other, and then like the next scene is like, oh, don't say that. You're like a father to me, or whatever. <laughs> right what an odd pairing. But also, I respect that neither of them want that scenario. Okay, like, sure. it's not ideal for either of them. Mm-hmm. Obi-Wan wasn't supposed to have, like, an apprentice straight away. That's true. Anakin was supposed to be with Qui-Gon. They're just making the best of a bad situation. They don't like each other. Great. And that's okay. And look, I also understand he's odd, right? Which one? A- <laughs> Anakin more so, uh-huh. because he's a monk. So he meets a woman who he's been thinking about for the previous, you know, 10 years, and he's like, you've grown too, more beautiful, I mean. Don't. Don't do that. Right? There's a moment where she's like, don't look at me like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. 
That's, you should listen. That's a red flag. <laughs> That's a huge red flag. And then he has a big sook. <laughs> yeah, he has a big... Yeah. Yeah. That's in the script. And then Anakin has a big sook. They meet again for the first time in 10 years, and then immediately he's like, Oh, and Obi-Wan doesn't respect me. And if you need dial it back, dude. This yeah. is not, not going to work. Just be like, I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm having a good time. I'm living my best life. Yeah, exactly. So apparently, though, as he's having that big whinge you're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, one of Padme's handmaidens is supposed to be like quietly laughing off to the side. Which I think would have been effective to just cut to somebody just shaking the head, being like, "This fucking guy!" <laughs> it's like, "What are you? What are you doing?" And then the scene, and this is being talked to death. This is not new ground, but just that tantrum of like, "I'm going to stop people from dying." By the way, I killed a bunch of like women and children, and just to be like, "That's okay. That's not okay. That's very uncool." I think it's very cool. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. But that's the moment where you go like. Oh, this is a crazy person. Sure, yeah. You know? Uh-huh. But again, they have to get together for the yeah, 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 for yeah. the Luke Skywalker Princess Leia situation. I loved the part where he goes to the Tuscan uh Raider uh encampment. It's at night time and he just he just cuts one of the tents over. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a little you have a little little something? Little uh, You could probably just tear that with your hands. A little Swiss army knife or something. <laughs> 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 He's learned from the best, is all I'm saying. (laughs) By the way, Hayden Christensen, I like him, genuinely. This is what he's supposed to do, and he's doing it, and I'm glad he's back. And I think he's even better in the next movie, and I think he's also good in other movies also. But the line where he says, I wish I could wish away my feelings, but I can't. That's nice. Like, God, I know people talk about the sand and whatever, but that to me, of just like, you don't want to give that another pass. I wish I could wish away my feelings. No, James, that's perfect. That's like a tone poem. I guess it is like a tone poem. Look, dialogue aside, the worst crime of this sequence of, you know, them falling in love is Mm -hmm. I just don't believe it. Like you said, there's too many red flags. Yeah. Padme is always laughing, like, in that uncomfortable way. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, where where, where you can tell she's trying to find an exit at every moment. (laughs) (laughs) Like at the moment where it's like... You know, politicians, you know what they should do? They should sit down and you know, talk about what's best for people and then and then they should do it. And she's like, yeah, that's what it tries to be. And he's like, yeah, yeah. well, then I've been they... a professional politician for <laughs> over a decade Since now. I was 14. Yeah. And then he's like, well, if people don't agree, then maybe someone should kill them. Not me, but somebody. And she's like, what? And that's before he's bad. Just yeah. to be like, there should be a man who <laughs> makes everybody do the right thing. That's right. And that man's name is Santa Claus. <laughs> That's right, he's canonical in the Star Wars universe. I wish he was. Mm. Obi-Wan's back wearing his, uh, his his little wig and his reshoots. It's a different wig, but you'll yes. notice. Mm-hmm. There's a bit in the elevator at the start. I think they were like, we need to have some scenes with these guys where they're not screaming at each other. Right, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Though, a bit of camaraderie building yeah, in a lift. Exactly. But one of my favourite moments uh, in this movie, genuinely, is the moment where they're going to catch Count Dooku, mm-hmm. right? And they're on the gunship. Because he won't get away this time. He won't get away Adoku. this time. Yeah, but he does. He does, it's true. And they're on the ship together, and Padme falls out of the ship, and Anakin's like, put the ship down! Put it down! And everyone's just like, no! Like, I've, <laughs> I've, I've entertained, like, every insane thing that you've said, mm-hmm. but this is the line. Absolutely not. You are in timeout, Anakin. Yeah, yeah. I will expel you from the Jedi Order, or someone will. Listen! Stop! Like it's just, I like that moment of just like, no, I will, I will, I will not stand for this anymore. Enough of your bullshit. As a parent, you, you've got to respect that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Obi Wan also has the best joke in this movie, where Anakin, you know, turns up to rescue him with mm. Padme, and he's like, "We're here to rescue you," and he's like, "Good job." Mm. And that's a great joke. It is a great joke. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, is- <laughs> maybe, maybe another pass in the delivery. That's sure, maybe. Yeah. This also has the worst, I feel, the worst I have a bad feeling. These days they would have been like, well, your rescue was cringe. <laughs> Very cringe. It did not make me lol. Mm, that's yeah. right. <laughs> this movie, I feel, also has the worst use of the, I've got a bad feeling about this. Mm-hmm. It's where they're all chained up. Uh-huh. And the, the monsters are coming to eat them. And Anakin's like, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, yeah? Perfect perception. Well That's done. Right. Yes, you've 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 had a you can see situation. things before they happen. <laughs> also, just logistically, how does that normally go? Like they just come out and like mash them into the pot. Like there's three political prisoners, yep. and then like 
tens of thousands of spectators arrive, yep. and then they bring out three invulnerable giant monsters who just paste <laughs> these people, and then what? Everybody goes home? Yeah, everyone goes home. Pretty short, generally, I would imagine, that that whole spectacle. That's a weird termite community. Who knows what they like or That's don't like. That's a good point. Maybe, oh, maybe they only live for a couple of days. So yeah. make these executions efficient. But you're right. I mean, I do, I do like those creatures, though. I think they're all really cool and unique designs, mm-hmm. and Obi-Wan has to fight a big crab. Yeah. And he's just not loving it, you know? That's true. <laughs> he's just you... having, he's having a bad time. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. I'm just imagining like episode four or whatever, and Mark uh, Luke Skywalker's like, uh, lo- like not respecting him and not believing in him or whatever, and then he's flashing back. He's like, I fought a giant crab monster. <laughs> you wouldn't even, you wouldn't believe what I've done. <laughs> I didn't have a lightsaber for a lot of it. It was I had to do so many rolls to get out of the way. Right. It's like a Dark Souls boss. Can we have that here? I don't know. It's canonical, yeah. It's canonical, yeah. Let's talk about Christopher Lee, though. Okay. I mean, I love the addition of him in these movies. The absolute king of the the Hammer horror movies, the B pictures. My goodness. Just he's he, you know real life war hero. Yeah. Gentleman, been in a bunch of bad stuff, but is never bad in it. A real war hero, and not only that. The correct side. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, apparently just a class act yeah. mm-hmm. all around. But I wish these prequels... First of all, I wish I could wish away my feelings, Mason. Absolutely. But I wish these prequels had a more consistent kind of B-villain. I, you know? I personally wish for infinite wishes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, that's good too. A more consistent villain. You're absolutely yeah. right, yeah. I mean, I, and I love Darth Maul, and I love Christopher Lee's Count Dooku, and I like Grievous... But I think maybe they should have just done the one. And maybe if the villain in the first one was Qui-Gon's master. You know what oh. I mean? Like that. And I think the reason that they did it this way also was very last minute to add more of a connection between him and Obi-Wan and everybody else. Because it wasn't supposed to be Christopher Lee. They had a bunch of other designs. Yeah. And then they, they got him and they went, okay, this will, will run with this aspect Let's of it. Let's redesign the character so he looks like Christopher Lee. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I, and I think... The idea that Obi Wan and him have that, you know, have that conversation, mm-hmm. and they both have that connection to Qui Gon and Christopher Lee. It's just, it's better than saying Dooku. It's a bad. Sure name. is. Yeah. It's just like throwing that in his face. He's like, I trained your master, and you knew mm. him very well. Maybe we should team up. And Obi Wan's like, you can see where he's like, is this bullshit? Yeah. Is there really a Sith person in the Senate? Like, is this real? Can I trust mm. this guy? And we don't know if we can trust this guy either because we've never seen him before. <laughs> and it maybe would have been nice to have him in the previous movie. Yeah, but I also think that's one of the strengths, though, to be like, which way is this guy going to go? Mm. You know, he was a Jedi. Is, is that good? He was a Jedi. <laughs> but on the other hand, he obviously looks evil. <laughs> and he's wearing the evil outfit. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Exactly. Apparently, a lot of his backstory is, and you get a hint of it here, is that he doesn't, really want to like bring about the destruction of the Jedi. He wants to set things right because of Qui-Gon being murdered <laughs> and kind of level the playing field. But he also wants to destroy the Sith. So he's in it, yeah. but he's not in it for the same reasons as Palpatine. When he's like, we could do this together, Obi-Wan. I think that was like a genuine oh, interesting. attempt. Okay. Or not. Maybe it's a retcon. Mm. I don't know. Also, his name is Count. Yes. You ever, you ever met a good Count? No. Chocula. Duckula. Is that enough? They're Sesame Street? They're fictional, though. All three of those Oh, yeah, good point. No, real life bad. Liar! That's just, you know, uh, PR from Big Count, <laughs> That's I right. suspect. Big, vague royalty that I don't understand. How do you, how do you feel about... Uh... Bad. Oh, okay. Where are we going with this? The end battle. Oh, bad. Yeah. Okay, so I do like that Anakin runs in and just gets rocked, like, immediately. That's fun. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just... And he comes back in for another little fight and he's got two lightsabers, mm. but clearly neither of them are a match for... Christopher Lee's stunt double with Christopher Lee's face pasted over the top. That's exactly yeah, right. That's a good effect. Then, of course, we get Yoda. How do you feel about... One of the worst things I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. It's it's not the battle so much the fight. It's the lead up to the fight. Yeah. Where they do some various force attacks on one another. And then Christopher Lee... It's like Lee, a turn-based strategy. Yeah, and then Christopher <laughs> Lee utters the immortal line, Oh, if, uh, uh, seems our force powers are matched. We should... Let's do a lightsaber fight. <laughs> you don't need any of that. Yeah. Just do it silently. Yeah. You Just know? some staring. Just some staring. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that that was added because they thought it was a bit abrupt to have Yoda just run in, <laughs> just run in <laughs> off screen <laughs> and just start run in and behead him. Just... Yeah. He probably could. Just like a magpie, just whip <laughs> in real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look. I, I never kind of loved the idea of Yoda with a lightsaber. Uh, John Knoll, who's worked on so many of these movies and he's still with Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. 
uh, in various roles. On this, he was the VFX supervisor. He argued with George Lucas that the final duel between Yoda and Dooku shouldn't involve lightsabers since they were Force Masters. Noel envisioned the duel as a battle of wizards uh, pulling references from Akira. And I think that could have been interesting as well to see that element of it. Love those wizards in Akira. Me too. Yeah. But as far as like... <laughs> But as far as like making Yoda look believable and the way that his cloak bellows and the way that something like that would move and fight, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's pretty good. I think yeah. it could, I mean, it does look silly, but it could yeah. look sillier, you know? Let me ask, let me ask you this, James. Mm. Do you think it would look better if you had a full-size lightsaber? Yeah, I don't know. Would it? Why would why would he have a little lightsaber? Because he's little. Yeah, I know, but the blade should be the same length. <laughs> yeah, and they don't weigh anything, do uh, they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you have to have the... I know, because the handle could still be short, right? You know what he should have had? Yeah. Just his stick. Yeah. Force powers on the stick. Hit him in the head with a stick. Hit him with a stick. <laughs> That's right. Because he could. Yeah. I think it's an admirable effort. I never used to like it. Okay. I understand it. I understand why people like it. You understand the moving pictures you yeah, yeah. presented before you. No, but I, I get why you would want to see that. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And I think the execution is, is pretty solid, mm, especially yeah. considering that it's like 20 years old now yeah. as well. And I do appreciate at the end of the fight, Yoda, he, he shuts down his lightsaber and he just, he's like, oh, jeez, I'm knackered now. <laughs> Back to being old, I guess. <laughs> God, he really takes it out of you. I'm taking a half day. I'm going home. But he doesn't though, does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's like, what? No, I'm sure what he did do is he's like, okay, can you... I'm just going to get on this transport. Can you take me back to the, yeah. the, the Jedi Council? Oh, we're going to war, are we? Oh, great. Oh, this is terrific. Can great. you just... just let me, send me down here. Yeah. It's fine. I'll walk. Can I have some electrolytes? <laughs> And Can I have some Jawa juice with electrolytes, please? <laughs> That's the Star Wars equivalent of like a four loco. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's alcoholic and it's got caffeine in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, it's time for Green Trivia. We're back with Green Trivia. You know it. Now, again, I just feel the need to mention we haven't covered everything because you can't. No. As long as these are, there are going to be things we, we miss. For example, did you know yep. that the original working title for Star Wars was Blue Harvest? Is that true? It's true. Wow. Did you also know that the sound of the bomb going Oh, I like that. Yeah. Is good. It is good. Yeah. Is that your entire fact? Yep. Did you know that this movie has like an amazing score, film score? Obviously. Did? Yeah. Again, obviously. Uh, did you know Mace Windu and he asked for the purple lightsaber, etc.? I did know that. So we've talked about those facts and there are other facts which we are not going to cover. Now that's just because he wanted to stand out in the battle sequence. That's right. right. What happened to yellow lightsabers and orange lightsabers? Why are they just blue and green? Ray has a yellow one or something. I know. Yeah. I, I know. know. You know? And in... Um... What's video one? games. Video games. In video games, that one, you can get an orange lightsaber. It's true. Yeah, what's his face? The guy. Kyle Katan? No, the other guy. Cal Kestis. Orange lightsaber. You're right. Temple guards have yellow lightsabers as well. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, let's do some green trivia. Okay. Uh, when that bounty hunter, the changeling, dies, she says, We shanet slimo, which uh, means in Hatties. It means, my one <laughs> wish is I didn't have bonitis. <laughs> <laughs> it means uh, Bounty Hunter Slime Ball. So because, she says that of herself. Yeah, because she gets poison darted. Even oh, though in the okay. game Bounty Hunter, which mm -hmm. we have covered for Caravan of Garbage, a lot of that game revolves around Jango Fett rescuing that character yeah, and right. carrying her off into the sunset yeah. at the end. Oh, so you're a Bounty Hunter? Yeah. Is, this is the Me? one. No. I am not. That's Changeling Lady. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I guess that is li just like us going like, oh, YouTubers. <laughs> Ugh. Gross. We're not wrong. Yuck. According to George Lucas, Obi-Wan hiding in uh, Geonosis, Geonosis's asteroid field mm -hmm. teaches young Boba Fett a lesson that he uses in his advantage during adulthood. Remember in Empire Strikes Back? Yeah. He learnt that from Obi-Wan, even though he didn't see him do it. But I guess he just assumed that he did afterwards. That's right. That's great. No, I hate that, actually. <laughs> At least I don't say it in the movie. Oh, Min, he tricked us. I better keep an eye out on that in the future. Someone tries to hide behind some asteroid bits. Better keep an eye out. Oh, I'm really glad I learned that from my Jedi. Uh, the Geonosian head design is based on the original concept of the Nemoidians developed for Episode 1. So they were going to be computer generated originally. Okay. And you'll notice that head design is also designed to look like the battle droids a bit. So seeing um. as the battle droids are created by these termite people, oh, so they've see. got a little bit of them in it. Oh. And also super battle droids, etc. Mm. Do you think that's for... Sex purpose? Yes, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. You'll live in the walls like creeps. Who that's, knows? How, that's how technology propagates, right? <laughs> yeah. All the other battle droids that didn't look like they'd be good for sex purposes. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you knew this, but NSYNC were pursued by both Lucas and Rick McCullum's daughters. Okay. 
because... Beatles style, just after a concert. That's right. Uh, the band members were offered roles while on a short break from their Pop Odyssey tour. Okay. Remember that tour we followed around the country? Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, yeah. So Lance Bass and Justin Timberlake were too tired and probably too cool. Uh, huh. But the rest of the band rushed to Industrial Light and Magic to film their parts as Jedi Knights. So for the arena sequence, they shot them all separately, and the idea was to kind of put them in in the background and have NSYNC jumping about. A Joey Fatone. Yes. The other two. The other two less famous ones, even less famous than Joey Fatone. Yeah, yes. They were there. So it was theorised that they were cut due to backlash because word of this got out, or that because they were SAG members and they'd have to be paid which they weren't, and were also happy to do it, but they just cut the entire right, thing. Uh-huh, okay. But uh, you might be able to see them in the background of some shots, but mm. who knows. And for this bit of green trivia, you can file this under, is this true? Okay. I, I, it was on IMDb, and I just... I just <laughs> Notoriously reliable. And it just seems... I, uh, anyway, the Geonosis Droid Factory action sequence was influenced by the 1998 video game Apocalypse. In the eighth level of the game, the main protagonist, Troy Kincaid, Bruce Willis... You remember this game, right? Yes, now I do. Yeah, (laughs) vaguely. Okay, sure. He has to fight his way through the Warfighter Inc. factory in which robots are built and manufactured. Is that game good? I don't know. Yeah, and we'll never know. Mm. Let us know if you want us to cover it. Anyways, box office. This was the only Star Wars film up until that point. That was not the top grossing film of the year Whoa. in North America. It placed behind Spider-Man and Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which makes sense. Yeah. That being said, it still did very well. On a $115 million budget, it made $653 million at the box office. wasn't record-breaking by any stretch, and it wasn't critically super well-received like the previous one, mm-hmm. but it generated interest and obviously hype built for what was to come next, Mason. Oh. Which we'll be looking at, of course, in two weeks because these are way too long. Very long. And we're sorry, Ben. Oh, my God, it's so long already. (laughs) You still have more words to say, probably. I know. Well, I'm pretty much done. You got anything else to say? Let me check my notes. Yay! I I just have one note here uh, that says, nice big smock, Anakin. (laughs) It does have a big smock, doesn't it? Also, of course, we are covering the video games related to the movies in between these to tide everybody over. And, of course, if you do want to see that early or these early, head over to bigsandwich.co. It's like our private Patreon. We have movie commentaries. We've done every Star Wars movie live action. Hell yeah. Hells yes. We have bonus podcasts. We also have our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out there a day early. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching this. We really appreciate it. And we love talking about Attack of the Clones. We'll be back next week to do another Attack of the Clones episode, Mason. Oh my God, folks. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, Grab that gem. We'll see you then. Where'd you, where'd you get your, your big smock? You get it at the big smock store? Big stupid smock store? Yeah, he store. did it on his little shopping spree. Oh, oh my God, you're absolutely right. <laughs>